In our last episode, we discovered the bodies of Lucy West's parents in their home in the town of Arafu. We learned from the town mayor that the town had been harassed by a gang calling themselves the family, and inside the West's home, painted in blood, we saw the signature of the family. The mayor gave us three possible locations of the family, one of which is the Northwest Seneca Station. Inside, we found a sewer grate that brought us to a cave infested with mire lurks. At length, the path goes uphill and we find a tripwire. After disarming the tripwire, we can step up cautiously. We see that it was connected to a fragmentation bouquet hanging from the chassis of a ruined train car hanging overhead. At the top, we find ourselves in some metro train tracks with fragmentation mines and bear traps all over the place. We see the bodies of many Mirelurks who likely have died to these traps. We have two paths before us. We can turn left near to some train cars or we can turn right. We'll explore right first. We see that this is the red line and this path leads us northbound to the train yard. As we continue forward, we accidentally trip a tripwire. This one was connected to a pitching machine, and it shoots a bunch of baseballs at our poor companion, Charon. Nearby, we can disarm another trap. We find a bomb inside a baby carriage, but sadly, my explosive skill was not high enough to disarm this. We can then go down one of these paths, and after disabling even more traps, we can go through a utility door to exit. We spawn next to some traveling merchants, and we get swarmed by a bunch of giant ants. By this time, it's night, and it's clear that we must have taken a wrong turn. The family's not out here. To finish exploring this train yard, though, we can head over towards that other utility room where we find a shed outside. Here we see a whole bunch of railway spikes. This is a great place to visit to stock up on ammunition for our railway rifle. When done, we can head to the eastern track to go through its utility door. We learn that we are in the Moresti service tunnel. Disarming the mines down this track, we can retrace our steps past the pitching machine and instead turn right near the train cars. This path winds around until at length, we find a big sandbag barricade guarded by a man in combat armor named Robert. Whoa, whoa, slow down there. This area is off limits to everyone but the family. Where the hell do you think you're going? I'm not telling you, Jack. Now let me get by. Oh, sure. Look, I don't have time for your bullshit. Turn around and go back the way you came. Otherwise, they'll be scraping you up with a shovel. Oh, I was just exploring. Sorry. Well, go explore somewhere else. This place is off limits to explorers. Actually, I was just wondering what on earth I could do with all of these spare caps I have. Sounds like an interesting problem. Let me take a hundred of those off your hands. You know, lighten the load. On second thought, maybe I'll hang on to them. Then quit wasting my damn time, asshole. On third thought, you're being very helpful. Here you go. I suggest taking the door around the corner if you want to get where I think you're going. You'll find it unlocked in a moment. Now, aside from bribing him, we have three other options to get by. If we have the cannibal perk, we can say, I don't know, for some reason, I feel like I belong here. Vance said others of our kind would find us. Sorry I was so harsh, but I don't share our leader's ability to feel others of our kind. Or we can pass an easy speech check to say I really need to get by. It's important that I find what I'm looking for. All right, all right. I guess you look harmless enough. Or if we have Lucy's letter that she gave to us in Megaton, we can say, hang on a second, I have a letter for Ian West from his sister. Oh, the new kid? Yeah, Vance said we should be expecting someone soon. You can head on in, but I would speak to Vance first if I was you. You can find him on the mezzanine overlooking the common area. So what is this place, Robert? This lovely hole in the ground is Moresti, the headquarters of The Family. Hey, Robert, what can you tell me about The Family? We are a badass gang, and we don't take shit from nobody. We also don't like nosy assholes who creep around asking too many stupid questions. All right, then. Well, I gotta go now. Just remember, I got my eyes on you. We all do. Robert walks on over and opens the gate for us. This little guard station has an assortment of scrap and ammunition. Even his bed, this is where Robert sleeps. 
But it's all set to own, so we can't take any without stealing. We find one terminal, but it's locked with a very hard lock. If our lock picking is high enough and we access it, we lose karma, strangely enough. The only option we find here is to unlock the station access door. But this is a door that Robert told us that he unlocked for us. So this terminal is useful to access the metro station if we choose to kill Robert instead of talking to him. Heading down the tracks, we can turn left to go through an employee's only door to access the Moresti metro station. Inside, we turn right. We see a split off to the left, which is blocked by a ruined train car. And heading on through, we find the metro station clean and lit up with light. We find shelving units covered in food and junk, tables set out, terminals. This looks like it's being lived in. We see a woman walk down an escalator to the south, but Robert told us to first check in with a man named Vance. Heading up the escalator, we find a man with a shish kebab in his hand and a motorcycle gas tank stuck to his back named Vance. Welcome to Moresti, human. Welcome to our home. My people call me Vance. I lead this group of weary travelers and outcasts who need a home. And to what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? This place is very different from any of the other settlements I've seen. What you see before you is the last bastion of hope for the downtrodden and misunderstood. It is a sanctuary for the oppressed and a beacon of faith for the tyrannized. Oh, is it? Okay. Well, I think I've stumbled upon the world's first underground insane asylum. Your words echo the very reason this place was established. <laughs> we have three options. We can allow Vance to continue. We are the remnants of society, cast aside like the clean-picked bones of a hunter's feast. Or we can say, whoa, whoa, slow down there, Slick. I left my thesaurus at home. What does all that mean? What does it mean? Allow me to simplify it for you, since you are obviously of limited intellect. I led my flock beneath the sun-baked sands of the wasteland to keep them safe and teach them my ways. Men of science would call us cannibals, eaters of human flesh. Society labels us as monsters, demons, and the unclean. Now, we have four options to proceed, including one fairly easy speech check, where we say, None of this talk is necessary. I know exactly what you are. You amaze me. Never have I met a human with the gift of cognition that you possess. However, if we choose this option, it jumps us ahead in the quest, and we miss out on a lot of dialogue that we can get from the other members of the family. So instead of choosing that option, we're going to take the long route and say, you're teaching them your ways? So what, you're reforming these people? Ah, your words illustrate why the hardships persist for my people. Reforming implies something is wrong with them and needs to be eliminated. I think of my teachings as more of an improvement. A way to transcend our cannibalistic nature. Wow, you're a real humanitarian. I find your choice of words quite droll, but that is what I have come to expect from your kind. Now, as always, we can lose our temper and say, Enough talk! I'm here to wipe your kind out! I would choose your next words very carefully if I were in your place. Your self-applauding notions are the sole reason we are down here in hiding like mole rats. I will warn you only once. Do not test me. I have no qualms about having your blood running down my throat. I will consider my words carefully. You're the scumbags who killed the West family. You just try it, psycho, and I'll splatter your brains all over the wall. Your words hold no fear with me, human. Now I think it is time to demonstrate the true power of the family. Tremble, fool. Tremble and face the wrath of the vampire. In which case, Vance and all of the other members of the family attack. There were a whole bunch of them sleeping in their little rooms nearby, and they jumped out to surprise me. The side of your own blood? Uh, where? Keep them pinned. But wait, maybe we're being hasty. Perhaps there is more to this situation. Before jumping to conclusions, instead of attacking, we can say, your people eat human flesh, Vance. That's sick. That is correct, my arrogant friend. 
but you are missing the grand picture, I'm afraid. A cannibal by any other name is still a cannibal. That is completely untrue. Your difficulty grasping the concept that change is possible in my people perplexes me. Let me try a different approach. Let me counter that ignorance with a lesson in objectivity. Or we can restrain ourselves and say, if I accept that you're no longer cannibals, what do I call you? Your open-mindedness is very rare for a human. I find that fascinating. Allow me to bolster your insight with a lesson in objectivity. I say we are no longer cannibal, only consuming the blood of our prey. What would that make us in your eyes? Uh, well, I think you're a bunch of creepy weirdos. Names like that have no meaning here. Your insults are a wasted effort. I don't have time for games, Vance. That is where you are mistaken, my friend. Time is a commodity more abundant than any other in this world. Uh, all right, so you're cannibals, but you only drink the blood of your victims and you don't eat the meat. What does that make you? Gosh, I have no idea. Then that is a mystery you will have to solve on your own. In ceremony, each member of the family must speak one of the laws. It is theirs to remember and to enforce. Perhaps from these laws you can discover what we are. Return to me when you are ready. With that, we can now interview each member of the family to learn a little bit more about exactly what they are. And Vance gives us the password to the family terminals, so we can access them without angering them all. But we are here for a specific purpose. We need to find Lucy's brother Ian, and we believe that he might be kept here. Before interviewing the family, we can talk again to Vance and say, What is this place, Vance? You are standing inside Moresti, the home of the family. This is our sanctuary from the outside world. It is a refuge for those society labels as outcasts. In the Fallout world, this place is called Maresti because it's built inside the Maresti metro station. However, it gets its name from a real-world town in Romania. Maresti just so happens to lie in eastern Transylvania. Tell me about the family. The family has become our moniker because that is exactly what we are. Related by blood. Even if all of us look different on the outside, we all have had the same vice infesting our insides. But now, through my teachings, these subjugated people have come together and formed a bond stronger than mere friendship. I've been searching for a young man named Ian West. Ah, yes. My newest charge. What would you want with him? So he is here. We can be impatient and say, I don't have time for chit-chat. Tell me where Ian is, now. <sighs> Short temper. So typical of a human. One more outburst like that, and I think I am going to have you removed from our home permanently. Enough talk, psycho. Tell me where he is, or so help me. Is there no end to your hostility? Your kind have never accepted us. So be it. All you rely on is violence to further your means. If that is what you seek, I will be happy to provide it. In which case they again all attack. Or instead of losing our patience, we can say, Ian shouldn't be here. He has family that misses him. We are his family. If he were to leave, how can you be certain he would not feel the same way about us? Ian is at a critical moment in his life right now. After all that occurred in Arafu, he is scared and confused. It would be ill-advised for me to allow you to speak to him while he decides what he wants to do. But he has real family left. I have a letter for him. It's from his sister. Then a part of his human family still remains? Even more of a reason he needs to remain in isolation. You're not family. You people murdered his parents. Murder is a very strong word, my friend. Do you consider it murder when a hunter stalks his prey in order to put food on the table? The family must do what it can to survive, and Ian provided us the way. Damn it, Vance! What did you do to him? Do to him? Nothing. Ian's hunger for flesh overwhelmed him. It drove him to kill his parents. Because of my intervention that night, he stopped just short of being lost forever to his cravings for flesh. Are you telling me that... 
Ian is a cannibal? I am telling you, he will no longer be labeled as such. He has become one of us, a member of the family. The hunger that drives us must be kept in check. It is one of the most difficult things to teach. Ian lost control because no one was around to guide him. His own family was alien to him. So you're trying to tell me that Ian murdered his parents because he's a cannibal and the hunger overwhelmed him? Vance, I find this all very hard to believe. The hunger that drives us must be kept in check. It is one of the most difficult things to teach. He had a moment of weakness, and it was fatal. Just let me see Ian, you filthy liar. I can sympathize with your anger, human. Many find cannibalism shocking, especially in the young. But understand that I cannot allow you to see him during his time of reflection. Please, you must let me speak to him. No, it would not be right to disturb him in this time of meditation. I am sorry, but I cannot allow it. Now, at this point, we can gain access in one of two ways. If we have the cannibal perk, we can say, Look, I'm one of you, so I understand your feelings. I just want to talk to Ian. Indeed. Perhaps my sense of caring for Ian has overwhelmed my sense of duty to the family and all others like us. Forgive my mistake. If you wish to speak to Ian, you're free to do so. Or we can pass a pretty easy speech check to say, This letter is all Ian has of his old life. Please, allow me to give it to him. Your words impress me, human. Perhaps I misjudged you when we first met. If you wish to speak to Ian, you are free to do so. Here is the code to the area in which he is meditating. In which case he gives us the password to the terminal that is keeping Ian locked away. The password he gives us is Vespertilio, which is a genus of the bat family Vespertilionidae. Bats of this family are commonly known as Vesper bats or Frosted bats. Now if we try to pump him for more information about the family before interviewing the others first, he says... No, I can see it in your eyes. You do not yet possess that spark of realization. Continue speaking to my people. So, we need to have some conversations. Well, we already know that most of the family is sleeping, but there was that woman we passed by earlier. Heading down the escalator, we see her walking around, and we can introduce ourselves. I don't think we've been properly introduced. I'm Holly, Vance's wife. What is this place? This is Moresti, the home of the family. It's the only safe place for these poor people. Tell me about the family. My husband started this group not long ago. He was trying to save them from a life of hardship and ridicule. They come from all over the wasteland now to find us and become part of the family. Is there anything you can tell me about Ian West? Like I said, he's in isolation. It's his time to meditate and reflect. Vance wants me to ask for your help to better understand your laws. Each of us is required to speak one of the laws when we hold our ceremonies. I say the first law. Feast not on the flesh, consume only the blood. This is our strength. Hmm, so they're serious about this whole vampire thing. They only drink the blood, they don't eat the flesh, but for what reason? Is it morals? Heading upstairs, we can talk to the first sleeping family member. This is a man named Alan. I don't think I've met you yet. The name's Alan. What did you want? What is this place, Alan? Right now, I call this place home. The only home that's ever let me stay with my... problems. Tell me about the family. Well, anyone that Vance takes in because of their special problems can be part of the family. I'm looking for Ian West. I don't have any authority here. I'm pretty new myself. Justin's been trying to talk to Ian, make him feel better. Maybe you should speak to him. Help me understand your laws. Oh, wait. Vance told me I was supposed to say something special when asked that, from his teachings. Oh, right. The third law is feed not for pleasure, partake only to nourish. This is our dignity. Whew, almost forgot it again. Okay, so they only drink blood for survival. It's not about pleasure. Heading on over to the next room, we find Justin... I thought I knew everyone in the family, but I don't recognize you. You must be one of Vance's new initiates. My name's Justin. I'm pretty new here myself. What is this place, Justin? Well, Vance told me that this place was called Moresti. It was named after some town way across the ocean in a place called Romania. Tell me about the family. 
It's a great way to get back at those assholes out there who think we're losers. If it wasn't for Vance, I'd still be getting the crap beat out of me by those guards in Rivet City. I'm looking for Ian West. Ian? What do you want from him? Now, if we didn't get the terminal password from Vance, we have an opportunity to get it from some of the other family members. With Justin, we can say, Ian doesn't belong here. How do you know that? If you've spoken to him like I have, I think you can see he's truly one of us. Ian confides in me. We share a special bond. I might be the only friend in the world he's got. What else can you tell me about Ian West? Just that Vance said he isn't to be disturbed while he's in meditation. He is needed at home, Justin. His family is dead. Yes, I know. He told me. Surprised? Well, Ian was there when it happened and did nothing to stop it. If you ask yourself why, the answer is obvious. He belongs with us here. He's one of us. Don't deny him his rightful home. Whoa. I think we just learned something important. Justin said he was there when it happened, and he did nothing to stop it. Justin is almost making Ian sound like a bystander, not like the murderer Vance was making him out to be. Hmm, what really happened here? To get the password, we can pass a speech check to say he needs to talk with someone from the outside to get some perspective. I'd never thought of it that way. I suppose he should get a chance to talk to someone like you. Here's the password to his isolation area. Just please don't mention my name to Vance about this. Help me understand your laws. Well, Vance makes each of us remember a rule. And when we all gather in the common area, we have to say it out loud. Kinda weird. So, my law is the fourth one. Seek not the sun's light. Embrace only the shadows. This is our refuge. Sounds like not everyone is thrilled with this whole vampire shtick Vance has going on. And why is one of their laws to stay out of the sunlight? They're just reformed cannibals, not real vampires, right? Well, heading on over to the next cubicle, we can talk with Carl. Well, well. I haven't had a customer in a while. Last one I had was a bit chewy. Know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. I'm not a cannibal. And are you trying to tell me you ate your last customer? Remind me not to patronize this guy's business. But hey, Carl, what is this place? This place is my place of business. You want to buy something, then buy. If you want to flap your lips, take a hike. Tell me more about the family. We're the last people you want to mess with. That's for damn sure. Can I see what you have for sale? Come back and see me when I'm minding the store. You better bring caps. There's no handouts to be had around here. I'm looking for Ian. Do I look like a fucking babysitter? I don't know where he is. Even if I did, I wouldn't tell you anyway. At this point, we can try to get the password from him by saying, You really have a bad attitude. That's me. You don't like it? Tough. Can't you help out without being so mean? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I hurt your feelings? <laughs> Tough shit. This is the real world. You want to know something? Find it out your damn self. Yeah, this is the real world, says a guy pretending to be a vampire. Okay. Now, if we have a female lone wanderer and we have the Black Widow perk, we can say, Hey, hot stuff. Why don't you tell me how I can see Ian? Now, that's more like it. I finally won't have to pay for it anymore. <laughs> ah, hell, here's the password to the Pipsqueak's room. Come back and see me after you talk to him. Anything else you can tell me about Ian West? Ian, 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 is that all you've got to say? Sheesh. Help me understand your laws. When Vance stands on that balcony and starts mouthing off like some kind of preacher, it makes me want to puke. But if I want to keep this place stocked, I gotta have his permission. So I learned his fifth law. Kill not our kindred. Slay only the enemy. This is our justice. Pretty silly if you ask me. Well, all right, I'll be going now. Say it ain't so. Wow. Charming guy. But another one who doesn't seem to be too thrilled with this whole vampire thing. Maybe Vance's attempt to reform is not going as well as he thought. Well, I didn't see another person sleeping up here, but we need one more law. So heading back the way we came, I wanted to talk with Robert, the guard who let us in. Yeah, I remember you. What's up? Tell me about your laws. Well, usually everyone has a rule or something they have to yell out at our gang meetings. 
Since I guard the door all the time, I don't have to do that. I mean, they're good laws and all, but it feels stupid yelling that stuff out loud. Oh, okay, so he doesn't have one. Well, we must have missed someone. So we're heading back to the Moresti station. By now, it looks like people have woken up, and a woman walks by whom I did not see earlier. Her name is Brianna. Well, well, I'm surprised you don't know me. I'm Brianna. I take care of the men around here. Well, unmarried ones, anyway. Ah, I see. Well, every town has to have a hooker, I guess. What is this place, Brianna? It's the last place I ever expected to end up. I mean, look at this place. It's so dark and dingy. What this place needs is a lady's touch. But don't tell Vance I said that. Tell me about the family. How about just the coolest gang this side of the U.S.? As long as we listen to Vance's rules and listen to his stuff, he lets us do pretty much whatever we want. I'm looking for Ian West. Vance has him in meditation right now. No one's supposed to be in there. Poor kid. He looks like he could use another friend. He really shouldn't be in there. I think this is the best place for him. Out there, he'd be hunted like all of us were. Sorry. I could be his friend. Well, that is sweet, but Vance would kick my rather gorgeous ass right out of here if I told you how to find Ian. Sorry. Anything else you can tell me about Ian? Nope. Like I told you, Vance has him in meditation right now. No one's supposed to be in there. And now if we play a male lone wanderer and we have the lady killer perk, we can say, tell me how to see Ian and maybe we can talk in private. My, oh my, that would be tempting. If you were that good, maybe I'd pay you. <laughs> Tell you what, handsome. Let me give you the password to Ian's room. Maybe you could talk to him and make him feel better. So that makes three other people, aside from Vance, whom we can get the password from. Hey, Brianna, help me understand your laws. When we all gather in the common area... Vance gives his speeches, and then we each have, like, a law to say. Mine is, Bear not the child, welcome only the exile. This is our fate. Kinda cool, huh? What? So, if they join the family, they agree to never have kids? I wonder if the terminal can tell us more. Taking a look at the terminal, the first entry we find is the five laws of the family. This is another way we can quickly go over the five laws without talking to each of these people, but the terminal also explains each of these laws a little more, why Vance has them to begin with. In the first law, Vance says, We do not eat the flesh of those we kill for food. We will only drink of their blood and leave the body intact. The consumption of flesh is filthy and unclean. This action is what causes the humans to treat us like animals. We are not animals. We are the family. Well, okay, but they're still killing people for the blood. I'm not sure why he thinks that drinking the blood is more clean than eating the flesh. They're both disgusting. But the issue isn't what they eat or drink. The issue is who they kill, isn't it? I mean, if we found out these guys were raiding a morgue or a graveyard, yeah, we would be disgusted. Sure, it might be a crime against humanity, but it's nowhere near murder. It's nowhere near preying upon towns. The murder part is the issue, not necessarily the cannibalism or the drinking of the blood. In the next one, he says, Because we carry the stain of our past in our bodies, we can never let it pass to our offspring, who would in turn carry out those foul actions, beginning the cycle anew. The family must seek the wasteland for others of its own kind in order to maintain itself. That is our fate. So he's interested in maintaining his family. He doesn't want the family to disappear. But he also doesn't want to bring children into this world who, quote, carry the stain of our past. I suppose he's trying to say here that a compulsion to eat other human beings is hereditary. Perhaps there's a genetic component to this. Perhaps they can't help themselves. He explains the third law by saying, We only kill humans when we're hungry, or when we must defend ourselves. We never hunt for sport or pleasure. We do not prey on children, for they are not yet tainted by society's views of us. The family will not tolerate murder. 
So when they kill someone when they're hungry, it's not murder in their eyes. Instead, they only see these people as prey. He explains the fourth law by saying, We are creatures of the night. We must not set foot in daylight. We move silently across the ground only under the watchful eye of the moon above. At the rising of the sun, we must seek the embrace of the shadows and never again gaze at its brilliance. The family seeks the dark as its refuge. Okay, so they don't shy away from the sun because it harms them in any way, like vampires do. They hide underground for practical reasons, simply so that they won't be found. And he explains the fifth law by saying, Above all, no member of the family will ever take the life of another member without the consent of the current leader. Anyone disobeying this action, the most hideous of all crimes, will be exiled from this place forever. We must not let our own inner demons cause us to fight amongst ourselves. We number only in the few, and we cannot risk extinction. See what he did there? He gave himself power of life and death over every member of the family. He positioned it as a noble thing. We act this way so that we don't fight amongst ourselves. It's wrong to murder each other unless I say it's okay. But in a normal town, it's just wrong to murder each other, no matter what the mayor or leader says. Most normal people follow a human law. We don't murder each other, we only kill in self-defense. This Vance guy leaves murder open. Murder is wrong unless I say it's okay. In the next entry, Feeding Grounds, these are perilous times for the family. We must feed, but the wasteland is a dangerous place. The only way to feed without massive loss of life is by getting close to the smaller human settlements. We will therefore use cunning and stealth to achieve our goals. No one is to forcibly enter any of their homes. We must keep our actions civilized. It is the only thing keeping us from being the animals they claim us to be. So he has a law against forcibly entering people's homes, but how then can we explain the bodies of the West family which we found in their home? unless they really were killed by Ian. In the final one, regarding the Arafu incident, I do not want an incident like this happening ever again. I was very clear that we are not to represent ourselves in a hostile way. The killing of the town's Brahmin was an act that was both unnecessary and potentially damaging to my work. I am dealing with a very delicate situation in this town, and I will not have it undermined by actions of revenge on humankind. Our time will come, I promise you. Vance. So they are responsible for killing the Brahmin, but someone here did it without Vance's approval. Was it because they were hungry? In my mind, it's better to kill Brahmin and eat or drink of them than to kill humans. But the way Vance ended that message made it seem like whoever killed those Brahmin did so not to feed, but to get revenge, as if he was bitter against humanity for ostracizing him for being a cannibal. Vance doesn't criticize the killing of the Brahmin for the deed itself, but because it was done at the wrong time. It's a delicate situation. Our time will come, he says. And what? When that time comes, is killing other people's Brahmin suddenly going to be okay? We learn who it was who killed those Brahmin when we eavesdrop on conversations between the family. What's up? Crappy as usual. No one's been by here in ages to buy anything. Vance is crawling up my ass because of that mess in Arafu. Well, you did kind of screw up. I mean, you didn't need to go and do all that stuff. He just wanted you to make them nervous. Whatever. Hey there, how's it going? Better, I suppose. I think Vance is finally calming down after Carl apologized for all that trouble he caused. It's about time. Carl's gonna get us in trouble at this rate. I hope he learns to calm down a little bit. I guess we shouldn't be surprised that it was Carl. The other terminal by the workbench has the exact same terminal entries. And if we wait until Carl wakes up, we find him manning his little shop. Now let me see what you got for sale, Carl. If your caps are good, you can buy whatever you like. Beats standing there drooling all over the merchandise. He's got a pretty big inventory, nothing special, no unique items, but he has weapons, armor, lots of chems and aid, and even some junk. Now that we have learned the five laws of Vance's family, we can go back to Vance to say, I think I finally understand who you people are. Indeed. Tell me what you've learned from the laws. 
What do you think we are? I think you're a collective of seriously messed up freaks. I can see that you have no understanding of what I have accomplished here. I tire of debating with those who are so narrow-minded. Now the first and third option have the same result. We can say, you're vampires, or at least you follow their fictional traditions. Or we can say, if I said vampires and you said I was right, we'd both be crazy. Do you think I believe I can turn into a bat and fly away? Of course not. Do I cast my image in a mirror? Absolutely. Now ask me if I believe these individuals from every corner of the wasteland need me to give them a sense of purpose and identity. I have shown these people the ways of the vampire. I have provided them shelter, organization, and a sense of belonging. I still say that you're cannibals. It saddens me to think that your failure to understand us could be my fault. If that is the case, allow me to enlighten you. We call ourselves vampires. A brotherhood that honorably stretches back thousands of years. Come on, Vance. You're on a power trip. You mess with their minds. Yes. In a way, I am brainwashing them. I am eliminating their fears, their inhibitions, and their shame. And you do this by teaching them that they're mythical beings? Now you disappoint me. You need to open your mind and think for a moment before you pass judgment. I have reigned in their cravings and taught them to eat not of the flesh, but to drink of the blood. Most importantly, they have a family. A place where their quirks are tolerated and understood. So now we know the full truth of the family. They're cannibals who prefer to be known as vampires. They've stopped eating the meat of the people they kill, but instead they drink the blood. And somehow they think that makes them more clean. As we walk around, we can overhear many conversations where the family members betray their insecurities and tell us more about the family. You look quite troubled, my darling. What's on your mind? I wonder if the family will really work. Sometimes, with all the troubles we have, it seems impossible to hold it together. Oh, come on now, Vance. You're doing what's best for these people. If it wasn't for you, they'd be living in the wastes. Or dead. You always have had a knack for making me feel better? It's the least I can do, Vance. You give so much and rarely receive. I'm glad I'm here to help. Well, hey there, cutie. How's it hanging? Great, actually. I finished my first round of studies and Vance said that I was doing great. I think I'm finally beginning to get the hang of it. Ha! Huh. I told you. In bed you were mumbling about how you think Vance is all disappointed with your progress. I knew he wasn't. The new guy's taking up most of my time, but I think he'll come around. He's been through some serious shit. Well, I just may have to do something special for Mr. Gloomy to cheer him up. Come back to the scary vampire lair, have we? <laughs> and once a day, the family will gather together on the benches to listen to Vance give a speech. Monsters. Villains. Criminals! Animals. Every one of us has been branded with these insults at some point in our lives. But why? Are we that different from those who hunt for meat to survive? Or for those who kill for territory? Of course not. I submit to you that we are the victims of evolution. The next step in mankind's acclamation to this hellish existence. The adaptation we were given wasn't meant to be ignored or persecuted. It's our way of survival. We cannot allow the humans to hunt us down and kill us like dogs. We must show them we are a force to be reckoned with. Well, rest easy now, my brothers and sisters. It's time to stop all of the running, all of the hiding, and all of the denying. We will organize, we will prepare, we will teach you to cope with your differences, and we will keep you alive. We are the family, and together we will stand united. He talks as if the family are a more highly evolved form of humanity. He describes their craving as an adaptation. Is he just making this up to excuse his cannibalism, or could this be true? 
We know in the Fallout universe that genetic mutations have occurred. Ghouls are commonplace, and this is due to some sort of mutation, some adaptation that humanity has undergone. I guess it's possible that some people have adapted to this post-apocalyptic radioactive environment by suddenly needing human flesh, or at least drinking their blood. But to have an all-liquid diet, ooh, that wouldn't sit well with me. We still have yet to find Ian, and there is one path left before us. At the top platform, if we head through the tunnel, we see a door immediately to the left. But this is not where Ian is kept. This appears to be Vance and Holly's private bedroom. On the desk is a very hard locked terminal. If we hack it, we again lose karma. And at the top we read, Os abismi vel dath which means The Abyss of Death. This is the name of a 2006 song by a Swiss heavy metal band called Celtic Frost. Some of the lyrics to this song read, How much of me is lost, I deny my own desires. The first entry, Vampires Defined. Vampires are beings based in folklore that prey on humans for the purpose of obtaining their blood. In these fictitious stories, the blood serves as both a food source and a center of power for the vampire. It is a common motif in these tales that a victim could become a vampire if bitten by one. Other noted attributes of vampires are its abilities to change into the form of a bat or wolf, to become gaseous at will, the ability to hypnotize the opposite gender, and increased lifespan. I forget, it's 200 years after the apocalypse. Some of these old myths that we know very well might not be as well known in those days. Maybe it took them a long time of gathering notes to get a fuller picture of what vampires are, and he's collected them in this terminal. In the next one, Daytime Fear. It is interesting to note that the vampire is traditionally regarded in literature as having an aversion to sunlight. Many people may believe this may stem from the misunderstanding of common phobias, such as photophobia and heliophobia, or even the actual physical issue of photosensitivity. In all of these accounts, the subject withdraws from daytime activities and is rarely seen outdoors. In the 18th century, with medical science in its infancy, this commonly gave rise to ridiculous accusations by the uninformed that these people were strange or cursed. This is likely the reason vampires are awarded this attribute in their stories. So because he has a craving for flesh and blood, but he doesn't have a fear of the sun, typically associated with vampires, he's trying to explain why this attribute may have been attributed to vampires due to the prejudice of the uninformed in the past. In the next one, Vampire Destruction, depending on the cultural source, there are several ways to kill or destroy a vampire. The most common is by driving a wooden stake usually composed of ash, hawthorn, or oak through the vampire's heart. In some cultures, the stake was driven through the mouth or stomach as well. Other tales tell of decapitation or immolation being the preferred method of destruction, along with anything else that can completely annihilate the vampire's physical form. And that's it on this terminal. We find the same regarding the Arafu incident, which we found on the previous terminal, and we can unlock the wall safe, which just has random loot. So, we now need to go find Ian. And we need to get some answers. These kooks think that they're vampires. They think that they've genetically mutated, that they not just want human flesh and blood, but that they have to have it. Or else what, they'll die? They're keeping Ian in seclusion, why? Are they afraid that he'll run away? Are they holding him against his will? Vance said that Ian was the one who killed his parents, but Justin said that he was simply there and he let it happen. Which is true. Did Ian kill his parents or did Vance hypnotize him? We will find out the answer to those questions in the next and final episode on The Family. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on this channel, covering a wide array of Fallout topics spanning all of the games. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. Thanks for watching, folks. If you like what I do here and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.
which is a genus of the bat family Vespertilionidae. 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 Ah. You. Oh, good job! I'm so happy! Okay, well, go upstairs to Mama. Daddy's recording right now. I'll be up in a bit. Close my door. Okay, goodbye. Bye bye, thank you.